Hey, it's Mr. Johns. Welcome to this first episode of another series of hobbies that I have. This one I decided um, I needed an extra shed in my backyard for um, tools, for, for things like weed eater, uh, trimmers, things like that. Um, I, they were all in a kind of like a plastic one of those plastic sheds, kind of small, but uh, plenty of room, but it was falling apart. So the door wasn't shutting. It was just falling apart. And it was a great excuse for me to build something. <laughs> so Mr. Johns loves to build things. So I sketched what I thought would be really cool. Um, as long as I'm doing it, why not make it look cool? I always say that. As long as you're doing it, make it look cool. So my, my motivation was this example. I saw this online and I thought that is the coolest thing. It's actually sitting on railroad tracks. Obviously was was never a, a caboose. It doesn't have the wheels and all that stuff, but it's a shed that looks like a caboose. And I thought, could I could I build something like that? I am not a builder. I've never built something like this. I've built other smaller, you know, things, but could I do this? Um, and that's where I started. So this is the room I've got. And there's the plastic shed in the background that is falling apart. And I would like to be able to put the, the pots and the potting soil and, you know, any garden kind of stuff um, there. To the right in this picture is a big barn shed that's full of Legos at this point and remote control airplanes. Um, so I literally threw down a 2 by 4 or 2 and kind of looked at this area and then screwed some um, two by fours together and thought, okay, now I started thinking, I don't need that much room just for a few tools. So what if, <laughs> what if I made it look like a train caboose and I had a, when you open it up, you could turn on the power and a train would run around like a train layout. So I thought that sounds fun. So what size should I build it? Uh, four by eight. Now that's good for a couple couple reasons. One, you can buy a four by eight sheet of plywood um, and that's all you would need. Um, and it's a relatively small space. So I went ahead and, and um, laid out four by eight plus a couple extra feet on each end for those for the little um, place where the caboose worker, the train worker would stand. So there you can kind of see what I'm thinking. Literally just laying things out as I had sketched it and seen it in that picture. Uh, and then the first wall goes up and that starts to get kind of exciting because then it seems to be kind of real. Now I was going to make like a much bigger, <clears throat> a much bigger shed. Well, because if the train layout is four by eight, and so there's a, you can see there's a four by eight sheet of plywood right here. If the whole thing is filled with trains city mountains etc how do i get to it like how do i walk around it that means i need like two feet and i actually measured how much room do i need to get my body around that means it would have to be like an eight foot by 14 foot now we're talking big shed and i really didn't want something that massive so that decision um, changed a lot of things because then how do you how do you work on the train set if it's if it takes up the entire you can't go inside so uh, we'll talk about that in a second so additional walls go up and it starts to look like a box and you can see where this hammer is this is where the the person would stand and so this is basically out and you could walk or jump from the caboose to the next train there'd be like the couplers right here at the bottom and that's how they were hooked together uh, and that's real you know back in the back in the 50s and 60s um, caboose were where um, they would have um, you know they could have a, a little couch to sleep on they could have a stove and a sink um not only a place for them to live but also it was a great place for them to kind of go to to get out of the weather uh, so you'd have a uh, engineer driving the train and then you'd have someone down in the 
kind of an engineer down in the caboose and they, he could um, walk or jump train to train. Not sure if they actually did that or if that's just in the movies while it's moving. Um, but the caboose was a really important part. They also controlled the brakes and things like that from the caboose. They could help slow the train down. Um, as soon as more modern trains were developed, a caboose were no longer needed and they went bye-bye, which is sad. They were always my favorite part of the train. So here I am um, adding on and I'm starting to think, okay, this would be a really easy shed, except for I want it to have that shape. So the, the trusses have to be slightly triangular so that so the snow and water will uh, come off. But also there's this little pop-out area where there was a window. So um, I started playing with shapes, and I am not excellent at math. I can measure, but when things get a little complicated, I tend to make mistakes and I did make some mistakes in this shed it's not it's definitely not perfect but it all worked out in the end so um, I made several mistakes that I had to undo but some mistakes I just left so basically you can see what I'm thinking this is the height of the truss I'm just gonna make a simple triangle and I've never done this before I didn't know anything about soffits and fascia um, or really like ac actual trusses. So here you can see these are trusses, just this triangle shape um, built out of two by fours and they all need to be the same so they have the same slope um, and it all goes together. And to complicate it, <clears throat> the sheets of roofing um, have to be strong. So you have to put the trusses at a certain distance apart and you have to have supports in between. So if there was a two foot snowfall, that the roof would would um, not collapse, and I decided not to use metal roofing, which which um, would be stronger, um, but more expensive and harder to cut. I decided to use um, plastic, corrugated plastic, like bumpy corrugated plastic, which you can see through slightly, so it allows some sunlight in, um, but it's not as strong. So, all right. So, and I'm also using real real siding, just like you would on the side of a house, and there are there's a like a groove every eight inches in the siding and it would have been a lot easier to not worry that I kept that eight inches all the way across the shed because I'm having to cut pieces out and f f put them in and you know it'd be a lot easier just to cut a piece and slap it on but because of those grooves I decided it was important to make them fit and make them uh Eight, eight inches all the way across. So here I'm working on the pop-out section, and then here is the um, soffit. So a soffit is a piece of wood underneath, so it kind of keeps the weather out beneath the trusses. And then the fascia would be anything that's kind of covering out front of that. Now I probably did not do this correctly. Um, technically this would be fascia, but there's this board up here as well with some ventilation gap. I decided to keep this open um, for now. And I thought, well, maybe fascia should go there too. So I'm I, at this point, I wasn't really sure. All new to me. So as I add on, it just starts to look cooler and cooler, which I really love. Um, and so here you've got um, the siding finished on one end and up top, put a little... Um, triangle shape up here to hide the little gap where these two one by um, fours come together. Here's some corrugated roofing that I was talking about. I got um, smoked gray, so it's it keeps some sun out, um, so it doesn't. So you know, I don't want the sun to be um, getting too hot in there or to be fading anything that has color. On the back side, now here's the issue with a shed that has a 4x8 train layout inside. How do I access? I can't reach four feet. My arms aren't that long. Uh, and standing on a ladder to reach across, not safe, not smart with all this delicate train stuff. So I decided to do something on the back side so I could access it all the way around. But how do you do that when it rains and snows and, and, and all that? So, And here you can see in the background one of those sheets of corrugated plastic in dark gray. So 
Oh, and part of my shed across the way there. So here it starts to look much more finished, which is really, really cool. Um, and I've got the, got the pop out up here and the roofing is pretty much finished at this point. And um, this trim is all the way around. Um, haven't finished the flooring over here on this side. So then I decided to go for the same bright red that was in that example that I saw online because I love that color. It is bright. It's very bright, um, but I do like it. So I picked up some red paint from the store, got lucky. Uh, Walmart had like barn red. Um, and if you go to Lowe's or, or Home Depot, you're going to spend $35 on a gallon of paint now. Um, but Lowe's, uh, Walmart has pr some pre um, they stopped mixing colors just recently, but you can buy. Well, no, that's not true. They still will mix if you ask. And they have, it's just not as, they don't have like a paint center. It's behind the counter kind of with all their other hardware stuff. But they do have colors that are pre-made. And, and luckily one was called Barn Red and it was like $14 for the whole gallon. That's a steal. So I went ahead and started painting all the way around and caulking the cracks so that the rain wouldn't get in. This is what it looks like um, looking straight in. And I had installed three very bright LED um, lights. There's a, a power strip right around the corner. You just reach around and push the button and it turns on all the lights. It's plenty of light, which I love. It's gonna be very, very bright. And you can see what I'm thinking here. Above these two by fours will be the train layout. And to make the, the this shed usable and not just another hobby shed for Mr. John's all this area underneath is storage for any tools and I might build shelves later things like that I don't know but it's plenty of space so it's great um, this is what it looked like after I decorated it so I decided to paint the trim I, I was gonna do yellow up here but it was so bright I didn't want to I mean my neighbors can see this it's it's above the fence slightly and I just thought that's pretty bright so I decided to go black on the trim up here, which is just a little highlight of yellow on this triangle. And then I stained the wood. These are also one by fours. I stained it with some outdoor waterproof stain. Um, these are supposed to be the bars that the person would hold on to while a train is in motion. These are just PVC plastic pipe that I spray painted yellow. And this yellow steering wheel is what the caboose person would turn to, to turn on the brakes, um, air brakes. What that is, is a steering wheel off of a um, playground slide, playground equipment that I bought online. This window is fake. Um, there is plast uh, plastic plexiglass that I painted black on the back side. So it looks like it's reflecting like real glass, but it's dark inside. And of course, this, this door is totally fake. And then I ordered some um, two little lanterns or solar lanterns. And so they glow at night. They're just little. They were pretty cheap just to kind of give it a cool look, um, which I thought turned out pretty nice. And then on the back side, here's what I decided to do. There's five very strong hinges here. I can see some little pieces I missed. I need to finish these. Uh, and then this, this entire wall flips down from this hinge and you can access the back of um, the shed and the layout from this entire wall which is that was my solution so it was a great engineering solution to access the back and as soon as i'm done building the train layout i won't need to access this very often but at least i can if i need to so that was a pretty good solution and then just recently um, put the plywood down and one trick that i learned was that if you put foam down on top of the plywood it will make the train um, quieter if you just put the tracks on the wood it actually vibrates and it, it's louder than it should be and not very realistic so i put down a four by eight sheet of um, foam uh, i think it was 13 dollars, not a not a bad price at lowe's and then on this um on the foam i'm going to draw where the track should go and that's a whole other project that I will continue in this series as I build this train layout, which I think you'll find really interesting and fun. I hope you do. But for now, I'm out of here. Mr. John's out.